All right, so we're gonna take a look at Mortal Kombat running on the Atari Jaguar. This is the pre-alpha build that's available today. Hey guys, I'm Chris with True Fun Entertainment, and if this is the first time you watch my videos, welcome. I am currently porting Mortal Kombat to the Atari Jaguar. I got lots of stuff to cover today, but most importantly, today is the official release of the pre-alpha build of the game. So finally, you guys can actually try out what I've built thus far. So uh, if you are a Patreon supporter at the True Tester level, uh, go to the top of your Patreon feed at the, uh, the pin, there's a pin post at the top that has details on how to download and run the game. So uh, we're gonna get into the, kind of the details of what's included and what's not included in this pre-alpha build. Uh, but first I wanted to kind of give you a rundown of uh, some stuff we're gonna cover today. So uh, the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the game actually running on real hardware. So we're gonna kind of show what's included and what's not included in this pre-alpha build and uh, kind of what my expectations are from you guys to help me test. Cause um, like I said, I, and you'll see a, a pop-up at, uh, at the beginning when the game pops up that says essentially um, this is a pre-alpha build. It is a little rough around the edges. Um, but I wanted to get it in your hands. Uh, number one, I think I owe it to you guys because uh, a lot of you guys have been supporting me for months and uh, I've been you know, giving you guys updates, but everyone's anxious to actually try it. So we'll take a look at that. Um, then, uh, as I kind of mentioned in the last video, I had to redo all of the sprites in the game for the fighters. My original plan was to make this a pretty much like an arcade port uh, to the Jaguar. And I was using those original arcade graphics, but I found that the sprites were just too big. They didn't fit. So uh, basically the, uh, the Atari Jaguar has two, uh, two megabytes of RAM. And for a single fighter with all of their frames of animation, it was over one meg per fighter. So obviously with two fighters on screen, we've already gone over the two megabyte uh, RAM limit. And that doesn't even count the background graphics, the music, the sound effects, things like that. So it simply did not fit using those original arcade graphics. Then I looked into the DOS version and I actually found that the DOS sprites uh, include all the frames of animation of the original arcade and they're a little bit bigger than the Super Nintendo graphics. So uh, I wanna show you guys what tool I used to get those uh, from the DOS build into the Jaguar build. There was a nifty tool that somebody built where I could go uh, inspect all of those sprite sheets and then uh, pull the graphics out of there and put them into a format that I could use on the Atari Jaguar. And then related to those sprite graphics, I also had to scale down the stage graphics as well. So I'm gonna show you guys my process of uh, the arcade graphics versus the Atari Jaguar graphics and how we get there. And then finally, we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive into this pre-alpha release and what this kind of phase of development entails and kind of what I can expect from you guys in giving me feedback, reporting bugs, things like that. So without further ado, let's take a look at the game. All right, so we're gonna take a look at Mortal Kombat running on the Atari Jaguar. This is the pre-alpha build that's available today. So you guys can download it, uh, run it on your game drive to get it running on the Atari Jaguar. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice is we now have the DOS-based graphics loaded in. So yes, the fighters are a little bit smaller. They're about 77% of the arcade size, but the important thing is everything fits. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, kind of what's in, included in this pre-alpha build. So let's select our fighters. And the first thing you'll notice, we load into the palace gates. So in the last build, we had uh, the pit loaded in, uh, but when I actually first started working on this port, using the arcade graphics, I had started with the palace gates. Uh, but because of size constraints, I had to kind of scrap everything and start over. But now the, uh, the palace gates are loaded back in. And in fact, in this build, we have four stages. We've got the palace gates, we've got the warrior shrine, the pit, 
and Goro's Lair. So, and like I said, this build includes a basic move set. So there's no special moves, no fatalities, um, but I went into something to where you guys can go ahead and start kind of feeling out the mechanics of the game, seeing, seeing uh, just kind of how the game works and how it feels. Uh, so with the basic move set, we can uh, do a low punch, a high punch, uh, low kick, high kick. There's a roundhouse and a sweep. We can duck and uppercut, and we can duck and kick. Of course, there's block and duck and block. Uh, we can jump, jump and punch, jump and kick, and then do a drop kick. And then close up, you can do like a throw, or you can do a headbutt, or like a body to body kick. So, like I said, with this basic move set, you can kind of get a feel for the game. And um, uh, also check that document that I included with the, uh, with the download because there is a list of known issues. Um, like I said, I have a running bug list of things I know I need to fix, but um, that's where you guys come in is helping me identify these bugs as well. Um, so, and like I, like I mentioned when the game boots up, uh, some things are rough around the edges, but I wanted to give you guys a chance to uh, to try it out and give me your feedback. So uh, up next, we're gonna talk about how I got these DOS-based graphics loaded into the game and uh, the tool I used to do so. Let's take a look. Okay, so as I mentioned in the last video, the biggest undertaking over the past month and a half has been getting those arcade sprite sheets out of the game and getting the DOS versions into it uh, such that they would all fit, that I could get all the frames of animation and all the fighters and all that good stuff. So I knew I wanted to use the DOS graphics, but I didn't know how to get them. I scoured the web, uh, all kinds of, there's plenty of uh, websites out there that have full sprite sheets for whatever game you want. Um, and there's plenty of like Super Nintendo and Genesis uh, game graphics out there, but there's not a whole lot for DOS. I found this really cool tool, it's called ReWolf. It's a Mortal Kombat GRA viewer. And a GRA file is basically a graphics file that's used for the DOS version of Mortal Kombat. And this is a little uh, Python tool that essentially you point it to the Mortal Kombat EXE for, uh, for DOS, and then uh, you can choose what graphics file you want to dig into. And as you can see here, it lays out all of the animations for the given fighter that you have selected. So, and then you can even do like an enable animation and it'll play through all the frames of animation uh, so you can kind of see it uh, in action. So, and the cool thing, like I said, the DOS version has all the frames of animation that the arcade had. The only difference is the DOS graphics are about 77% of what the arcade sprites are. And that was just enough to get them all to fit on the Jaguar. So what I did was I used this nifty little tool to go grab all the graphics. Uh, and this tool has a nifty export button that it will export a PNG that I can then bring into paint.net and put onto a sprite sheet that I can use on the Jaguar. So from this, I then went into paint.net and I created this. This is the, uh, the actual sprite sheet uh, that I'm using on the Jaguar. And as you can see, everything's spaced out here to work with the, uh, the 16 by 16 grid that the graphics need to be in for the Jaguar. And while using this little tool, the ReWolf Mortal Kombat viewer, uh, it kind of gave me a behind the scenes view of Mortal Kombat while it was in development. And I thought this was pretty cool. So uh, first of all, Shang Tsung is not labeled as Shang Tsung. He's actually labeled as the Emperor. So I thought that was kind of cool that, you know, while developing the game, they hadn't yet named all the characters. So Shang Tsung is known as the Emperor. Instead of Sonya, she's labeled as Liz. I'm guessing after Elizabeth Malecki, who is the actress that played Sonya. And then finally, perhaps you've heard the lore of Mortal Kombat uh, originally being designed as Van Damme the video game. So they, you know, the, the creators got inspired by movies like Kickboxer and Bloodsport, 
and wanted to make a fighting game that they could then take to Van Damme and get him to actually act and uh, do his uh, likeness in the video game. Uh, but turns out he didn't want to do it and we ended up with Johnny Cage. So in the game, or I'm sorry, in the code and in the graphics for the game, he is known as Van Dan with an N, but still uh, pretty darn close to Van Dam. And uh, at the time, they didn't have the name Johnny Cage uh, found yet. So all this is kind of cool behind the scenes stuff that I learned while using this tool. It's been cool on this journey of porting Mortal Kombat to the Jaguar because I've learned so much more about this game. Um, you know, this came out when I was like, 12 or 13 and like it was the coolest thing in my childhood. I I love this game and I played it everywhere as much as I could. And um, you know, I drew pictures of it after school. I did stuff on my computer, uh, you know, to do uh, Mortal Kombat artwork and I would try to do everything I could for this game. And all these years later to be able to actually work on this port and learn the history of its development at the same time, it's pretty cool. So I'm enjoying it. And hopefully you guys are too. And then one other note on the graphics that I wanna show you guys is in getting all the DOS graphics uh, and these scaled down graphics into the game, I also had to scale down all of the stage graphics as well. So what we're looking at here is, this is the Warrior Shrine uh, stage and these are the arcade graphics that we're looking at here. So. I found that the the way I'm doing the backgrounds on the Jaguar currently, and I say currently because, you know, things are always evolving and changing, but the, the way I'm currently doing the backgrounds is they're a single image, and uh, I'm then panning the camera back and forth uh, with, that, with that image. Now, I'm doing a viewport, so the entire graphic isn't loaded into memory. I'm actually only doing a portion that's being drawn on the screen. But it's still one large graphic uh, that's loaded in and displayed. Uh, that's not how it works in the arcade or on any of the home ports, like the, uh, the Super Nintendo and Genesis ports, uh, and including the DOS port as well. They actually do a tile-based system for the back-end graphics, or for those stage graphics. Um, and I still might go that way um, just because uh, it could increase performance if I didn't have these large uh, stage graphics in the background. But um, for now, that's what we're going with. So I went back and looked at the Super Nintendo stages to see kind of if I could leverage those in this build. And kind of what I found was this. So like I said, this is the arcade and this is the Super Nintendo version. So you can see there's actually quite a bit of detail is missing. So obviously the graphics are scaled down and not as detailed, but we also lose the two flags that are on the either side of the Goro. And then each of the fighters you'll see have a little red uh, kind of iron fence behind them that uh, kind of helps accentuate each of the statues. So, um, what I've done is I've tried to use those Super Nintendo stage graphics as a basis, but I've uh, added to them using the original uh, arcade graphics uh, to kind of scale those down and, and add them to the Super Nintendo version. And that way the Jaguar version is something unique just to this version and also a bit closer to the arcade. So this is the arcade. This is the Super Nintendo. And this is the Jaguar version. So you can see I added back those flags on either side of Goro, and I added the red iron fences behind each of the statues. All right, and finally, for my Patreon supporters at the True Tester level, when you go uh, check out that pinned post, uh, you'll find the download for the actual ROM that you can uh, copy into your nifty little, uh, your game drive. To test, you'll need one of these, an actual Atari Jaguar with a game drive. Uh, you'll get the ROM that you can then copy to your SD card, put it in your uh, game drive, and run the game. Um, you'll also see this document. This kind of gives an overview of the uh, 
about the pre-alpha and uh, what's included. Uh, we have links to the bug report and the feedback report, which I'll show in here in just a minute. Uh, controls. Uh, so the, the pre-alpha build does include support for both the three button standard controller and the six button pro controller. Uh, there isn't customization yet. I haven't built out that screen, um, but you do get the default uh, loadout with both controllers. Uh, so the controls are covered here. Uh, and then at the bottom, this is important to go over uh, whenever you're looking to report a bug because I do list out all of the known issues uh, in this build as well. So, and when the game boots up, you're gonna see two QR codes. Uh, each of those codes is used to either pr uh, provide feedback or report bugs. So the feedback form basically looks like this. Uh, and it's just asking general questions. You know, were you satisfied with pre-alpha? Uh, what did you think of the graphics? What did you think of the sound effects, music, controls? Uh, and so on. Just a few questions to kind of see uh, what you like, what you didn't like, uh, and then there's an open uh, open text box at the end just to provide any and all feedback that you want to give. And then if you do find a bug, there's a separate QR code that will take you here to the bug report where you can uh, describe the bug and uh, be as detailed as, as possible when describing what's going on. Like, what, what are you expecting it to do? What is it not doing? Or what's it doing that it's not supposed to be doing? Um, and then how to reproduce it. So the big part of uh, debugging is being able to consistently reproduce the bug. So if you do, uh, if you find something, certainly report it. But if you can reproduce it consistently, uh, that helps a ton in me debugging, you know, what's going on. And then finally, you can upload uh, a screenshot as well. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of this. If you do want to get on the pre-alpha, go to the Patreon page and sign up at the True Tester level. Uh, you'll then get all the details you need to get started. Uh, that's all I have for today. I'm going to uh, kind of make this short so that you guys can hop in and start testing the game. And I look forward to all your feedback, all your bug reports, everything. So as always, thanks, and we'll see you next time.